Hi, I'm Jamie from Stillmeyer Games, and today I'm going to talk about my favorite mechanism in the game, The Veil of Eternity, which I played just one time at, what, I think it was four players on Board Game Arena recently. I haven't played the tabletop version. Veil of Eternity looks like this. It's a beautiful game, um, relatively themeless, themeless, but that doesn't matter. There's a lot of wonderful combo building built into this game. My favorite mechanism in the game is related to the currency of the game. Let's see if we can find some good photos of that currency. Because it has huge, a huge impact on the game. So, oh, here we go. The, the currency is right down here. So there are three different types of currency in the game. These are coins valued at one, three, and six. And the whole game seems to be built around the fact that the, this currency, you can't make change out of this currency. The ones, if you if you have something, to, if you have a card that costs like seven and you have uh, three threes, you don't get extra ones. You don't get ones in return. You are spending all of your three threes at, to get that seven cost card or to play that seven cost card, which sounds restrictive and it is, but the game builds upon this idea in so many interesting ways that I thought it was really, really clever. For example, um, when you select cards, there's this draft in the game where you're selecting cards. When you select cards, and here's, a, yeah, that's kind of an example of it. Yeah, here's the, the card draft happening here. When you select a card, you gain some currency along with that card um if you decide to keep the card uh, or sell the card essentially not keep it if you decide to sell the card so you, you you put down these little tokens on the card to say okay this is these are the cards that i want to draft and then when it's your turn you get to look at the two tokens you put down and decide okay i want to take this card into my hand uh, to play in the future or i just want to sell it right away to gain this uh currency so all red cards you'll gain three uh one value tokens there are some uh, these pink cards. You gain one red and one blue. The purples, you gain one six value token. Uh, so you gain these different tokens, uh, which on the surface, again, seems like, okay, I'd always just gain the six value token because that's worth more than three ones, right? However, this is where the combo building comes into play because a lot of the cards in the game give meaning to these tokens. Maybe a card might say uh, gain points for every three value token that, that you have, every, every blue token that you have, essentially. Uh, another one says, uh, one that I had in the game that I played said that each of the one value tokens that you have have are worth plus one. So I was trying to go out of my way to gain these one value tokens because they're a little bit more flexible. I, I don't have to, to, you know, you're not making change. And so I'm not losing money when I overspend, um, but I'm getting extra points, er, extra value out of them. So there's points, there's value, there's other benefits. So the whole game is built around this really interesting currency system that it isn't just money that you're spending they are key resources in the game that turn into combos that turn into points and turn into other things based on the cards that you play um and I, I i love that aspect in general but i especially think it works particularly well because you have the potential to sell any card after the draft for specific resources specific currency based on the color of that card so yeah that is my favorite mechanism in the veil of eternity actually i do want to mention one other thing that we can kind of see on this photo uh, the game is a race to 60 points, which I thought was a clever addition as well. You can see the 60-point the timer right here. So you're trying to be the first player to get to 60 points. Uh, you'd still finish the round, so a player might be able to race past you. You're still trying to get more than 60 points. But that tension, I really like that tension in this game, that it wasn't just a game that you played for a certain number of rounds, although you can. The game does end after 10 rounds if you make it that long. We did not make it that long in our game. But that, that tension of saying, okay, you can play 10 rounds or race to get 60 points meant that points were relevant right away. Points were relevant from the very first turn of the game. game. You weren't just building an engine. You were trying to get points every single turn if you could and then build tor tor towards ideally some big turns at the end of the game. So yeah, those are my thoughts on Veil of Eternity. If you're looking for another game that uses this coin mechanism, I believe it's Alhambra. It's been a while since I played it, but I believe Alhambra has a similar coin system. I don't recall Alhambra doing as much with those coins as Veil of Eternity did, I, it does. I, I recall it being more of a restriction uh, rather than something that was built into uh, selling cards, um, uh, buying cards, uh, of course, buying cards, and also the combos that you see on Veil of Eternity. But if you can think of another game that does that and does incorporate those different currencies into so many different aspects of the game in the way that Veil of Eternity does, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Also, if you have any thoughts on the Veil of Eternity, I'd love to hear about your favorite mechanisms in the comments as well. Thanks.